2018, we received a call from a client about some equipment that had had a fault in it. We sent two of our technicians out to the job site to examine the fault and determine what had happened. What they found was the equipment had had an electrical failure of the insulation and the power had been turned off by the utility company so we could get in and work on the equipment. So all the lockout tagout was done, all the job safety evaluation was done, guys prepared to do the work and they executed the work that day. That morning, the young man with the utility company left his wife and two children and he came to work. And he isolated the circuit so that we could work on it. Later that evening after we completed our work, the young man came back in order to turn the power back on to our client's facility. One of our technicians heard a loud sound and when he turned he had seen where a blast had occurred out of the transformer feeding the facility. The young man with the utility company was on the ground. His tools, his meter, parts of his clothes were scattered about the transformer. He went over, our technician did, to render aid. The young man was coherent and our technician asked him what he could do to help and he said, could you call my wife on my cell phone so I can talk to her? So our technician dialed the number on the phone and held the phone because the young man's hands were burned so badly with his face that he couldn't hold the phone himself while he talked to his wife. The ambulance arrived and the young man was carried away. In the hospital his burns were so bad that really all they could do was put him in a drug induced coma and treat him the best they could and they had determined <clears throat> through the process of it they'd probably have to amputate both of his arms. About a week later we got word that the young man had died of pneumonia. So he got up one morning and he went to work like he did mornings before for years. The young man was in his mid-thirties, two small children. And <clears throat> during the course of doing a job that he had done day in and day out, something happened that afternoon and he lost his life. And his wife and two children did not see him again the way they saw him that morning when he left. This is one incident that's happened recently where we were present and our technicians were there <clears throat> as this occurred. I'm not going to analyze all the things that went wrong with it, but I will tell you just based on a cursory look at it, everything went wrong. When we deal with safety, especially electrical safety, we lay layers of mitigation in place so that as long as at least one layer of the mitigation is followed, catastrophe is avoided. In nearly every catastrophe that causes the loss of life, it doesn't require the failure of one level of mitigation, it requires an entire breakdown of the whole system of mitigation. In nearly every case that mitigation breakdown is due to human error. Human error is completely avoidable. The problem is we have to start paying closer attention to the human error itself.